by order of Yahweh, sanctified by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With a lot of pushing and shoving from the Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And I'm not sure exactly what to call this. The Spirit hasn't told me, and he's kind of poking me around. Uh, as most of you know, if you've been watching The Harvest, you know that uh, I have been immersed in, in finding out uh, some of the secrets, and, and uh, Paul has revealed, I'm not even done with the book yet, and Paul has revealed uh, the perfectness of God. Uh, unchallenged, unbelievable. Not the story I heard in church. Of course, nothing I've been reading in Romans has been anything like I hear in church. And, and don't get me wrong, guys. Church is a wonderful place. It attracts people. They hear about God. All you need to do is have Jesus etched on your heart. And you're in. Now, here's a couple of fallacies that people keep passing by, and I was under this conviction almost my entire life. Not that it matters. Well, maybe it does, because maybe you have had the same problem. And if you have, that means that you may be the greatest power in God's arsenal. One thing we learned in Romans is that a very real creature in the universe is called sin. And if you follow it, and I'm actually going to do a dissertation when I'm done, uh, but sin was in the world before anything else, before the world. And then God created the heavens and the earth. And all was perfect. And then he created Adam. Well, sin showed up. Now, sin is the master of deception. The way Paul put it, you know, God gave us commandments. One of those commandments was, Thou shalt not covet, and it was done for righteousness. And one day, Paul heard that law. Until then, he had not known sin. And sin got hold of him, and they said, oh, you coveted. And he said that urge became strong, and said, but it was the conviction that was strong. He convinced himself that now he was dead. He was, the wages of sin is death. Sin convinced him, you're dead, that's it. All right, that belays the entire Christ came to save us story. If Christ is etched on your heart, you got a ticket to heaven. If Christ is etched on your heart, you have a ticket to heaven. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's not an iffy book. I just heard a preacher say, oh, it's a very iffy book. No, it's not. Paul's very direct. Christ etched on your heart, bang, into heaven. Oh, but you sinned. Yeah, we all sin. We are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. The master deception that turned Paul, who was at the time a very righteous man. He followed all the laws that he knew. He was good and righteous. And then sin came to him and said, Oh, look, you wished you had your neighbor's car or horse or whatever. Paul said he coveted. He didn't say what. And covet's a broad term. If you want something somebody else has, that's coveting. Pretty much. Paul said he coveted. And sin took that glorious law God gave us and twisted it and stabbed him with it. Just like you, if you've ever committed a sin. And Paul didn't create a heinous sin. He just, in passing, wished he had something that wasn't his. And that broke the law. And sin said, yeah, I got you. And sin lorded that about him. Not knowing he was going to drag Paul to Christ. Paul became an apostle of Christ. Paul was sanctioned with writing the book. Well, yeah, a big part of it. All right? Romans is the law of Christianity. And it says, you can't sin... If you have been saved. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. 
Let me define that for you. Sin is in the world. We do things that aren't right, and we know morally if things are right or wrong. If we do something against the Lord, we sin. If we break the laws, we sin. The wages of sin is death. And in the Bible, somebody loved that one. Said, uh, Romans 5 or 6, 23, I think. Uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. It says all. A-L-L. All. Not just you. Everybody. And we got a golden ticket. It's called Jesus Christ. Now you got to etch him on your heart. And it kind of explains how all that works. But Paul says that sin came against him. Magnified this. Now I know the story because early in my life, I received the gifts at a very early age. I knew. I was walking with God. I dedicated at 18. But I've always been under a conviction because I had sex with my girlfriend that we were married. And if I should ever have sex with somebody else, and I found another girl, I fell in love, and I had sex, and I that's when sin got me. And it said, you sin, and now until that person dies, you're going to sin. And if you do it again, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to... I believed him. I covered things up. I ran. I hid. I did drugs. Well, overall, I've been a really, really good person. I mean, I'm, I've been blessed with the gifts of the Spirit, but I haven't been right up here. I believed everybody. They said, oh, you did that. You can't go to heaven. Well, that compounded what I had. And somebody else came up and said, oh, wait, 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 you didn't cross that and, and cross yourself four times, you can't go to heaven. Whatever kind of BS story they're giving you, it is not true. If you don't tune in to anything else, go to Romans, what did I just do, Romans 8, 7 or 8. Uh, it announces on the outside, this is the law of God. And we're going to the penalty phase next. We're going to the explanation of how sin gets us. Because we can sin and fall short of the glory of God, but only if we allow sin to overtake us. Somewhere in there is intent. You don't deceive the Lord. You don't deceive the Holy Spirit. But I got a message for you. If you once knew the Spirit, the Spirit knows you. Chances are He's been protecting you your entire life. And you know it. It's like a dad showing up a half hour before the cops do at a drunken party and dragging his kid out. How many times has the Spirit done that for you? And you didn't even bother to say thank you. Oh, I was lucky. No, you were blessed. Because once you've stepped on that wagon, now I stepped on when I was a kid, I had no idea what I was getting on. I didn't know it was a magic carpet ride. The first time I talked to the Father, the Spirit blessed me with the gifts. Sin blocked this by telling me about the lie that happened. I'll go into all that another time, but the last few years I've been under the conviction that I just couldn't make it where God wanted me to go, that I had failed him. You know, he's invested an awful lot in me. The Spirit has <laughs> gone through a lot of trouble to get me here. As a result, they put me in charge of the harvest. And that's why it's ordered by God, sanctified by Christ, with a lot of help from the Holy Spirit, because he is just... Without him, I was as lost as I was before. He came and fished me out of the barrel. But if you are anyone who has ever been told you can't join, you can't come to heaven. Okay, now this is going to make a lot of people mad. 
Christ said, Nothing is unclean. To which Paul said, I believed him. Unless you believe it to be unclean. Now Christ followed up with this. He's, Christ told Paul, unless you believe it to be unclean, and then it is unclean to you. It doesn't mean it's unclean for anybody else. You get to control the belief systems and the pitfalls and the... <clears throat> Just be careful sin doesn't get involved in all of this. Because it will push you into places you... Well, look what happened. There's some examples that they give us in Romans of what sin has done. Of course, the greatest plan was how God defeated sin and saved us all. Absolutely awesome. Guys, get on over to Open Call. Please. The worse off your life is at this moment, the more you need to get there. Open Call will send you to an encounter with the Holy Spirit. We'll get you back on track. I need help. The world needs help. Yahweh needs you. He needs your help. Speak his name. Yahweh. Yahweh! Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh! Praise! Praise be to your name! Speak his name! Know his name! Don't call him God! He is Yahweh! Y-H-W-H. -H. Now, they did an English thing where it added some vowels to it, so it's Yahweh. He doesn't care. What he cares is that you know his name and you carry it on his lips. On your lips. Carry his name on your lips. <laughs> Knowing Jesus Christ in your heart is your ticket to heaven. It doesn't matter what sin. doesn't matter how bad sin comes against you. There's something in it that tells you the harder sin comes against you, the more righteous you become. And then there's the idiot that says, well, then why is anything we ever did wrong? Well, because Paul tells us somewhere along the line, if you're immersed in sin, and he says stay away from it, because it is a trap. And if you're immersed in sin, sin can overtake you. You know, it's the balance. I am all that is good. I am all that is evil. Mm, pretty close to the last thing that Paul says. He says, whatever he does good, there is always evil. He's talking about sin. He covers sin in three chapters, guys. Sin has got a hold of a lot of people that are pointing at you and saying, hey, no, go away. Why are they doing that? They don't know. Sin has distorted it so bad that they see that one thing that they covered. It might have been an ice cream cone if they had such a thing. Could have been nothing, but it was blown up out of proportion by the lies of sin. Do not, please. Guys, I need your help. I ain't got time to chase around. Uh, oh, and I'm not screening. I'm in charge of the harvest. Uh, I will get you to the spirit. Then you need to get on to what you're supposed to be doing. We're going to go into the debt part. I owe so much to the Lord. When I tell people what he's done for me, they think I'm bragging. I am. I am boasting on the Lord. He has <laughs> done things for me. They're absolutely incredible. He's taken me places that I never would have thought I could go. Praise you. Start your name with start your day with his name. End your day with it. If you throw your hands up and say, Yo, 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 you will feel him. You will feel the Lord. And you will feel his power. You'll feel his spirit. All you got to do is touch Jesus.
and you won. Anyway, the worse you're buried, the worse you are, the worse you think you can't come back, those are lies to keep you off the front line because you are front line people. You are the best. You are what God has put on this earth to glorify his name. Get out from underneath whatever it is got you. Get out. Move forward. God needs you. Show up. If you know somebody that fits this bill, say to them, do you know the spirit They may give you a blank look. You follow up with this. If you do, the spirit knows you. Do you know the spirit? If you know the spirit, the spirit knows you. Know what's going to happen? See, they're going to be glazed over. Back off to their stupor. Or a light will come on behind their eyes. At this point, they need some direction. It would be nice to send them to the open call. You can send them here. This kind of defines it. Open call is better. <coughs> if they know, they know. Send them to the Holy Spirit encounter. Guys, this is real. Yahweh is coming back. The glory of God will be known. And it will be known amongst us, the children of the Lord. And we're going to be hampered. Oh, man, Romans goes through all the people that told the Gentiles, that's you, sinners, you can't join our club. you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to go this way, you got to jump that way. Oh! Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe. Now that's the hard part. Believe in your heart. Confessing with your mouth, anybody can do. Although they say it's hard to say Jesus is Lord if you are not with the Spirit, or the Spirit is not with you. And if you are filled with the Spirit, you cannot curse, curse, cannot curse the name of the Lord. That's it. That's it. Guys, you want to know the exact reading of it? There's a video. I go line by line. I try to unconfuse it because keep in mind, Paul was under a death sentence when he wrote the Bible. If he sounded like Jesus in any way, shape, or form, he was going to end up like Jesus. That ended great for Jesus. Wouldn't have done as well for, well, yeah, it would have, because he would have been, he would have died for Christ's name, which would have made him glorified above all. Uh, the greatest honor we can give is to give our life for our Lord. Uh, that's, that's glory and honor to us. I mean, uh, the whole purpose of us is to glorify and honor God than Christ. But if you'll take a bullet for him, you will be exalted.
Hemlock.